Hello everyone. So in this lecture today, this is another preview lecture from my forthcoming Udemy course on APGX Cloud API management platform. And in this uh, lecture, I will be discussing about how OAuth2 works. So please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends and like-minded to support me in my effort to reach to the maximum people of the community. And for those who will be interested in my forthcoming course can write to me on my email address and uh, also they can uh, put a comments in the below the description after the video is published. So over to the actual lecture. So we have heard a lot of noise about OAuth recently. So in your um, mind, it could be a question after all what it is. So Let's answer this, you know, we'll refer to this figure one. Now here you have got, let's explain the different components. Assume that there is an app that lets you access multiple bank accounts. So you could have more than one bank account, say two or three. Maybe the app is used to help with managing your budget. This app, this app, and this is the user yourself. Now three bank accounts that you want to manage with the app, let's assume that you have got three bank accounts and the same app is managing all these bank accounts and each account has a different username and password. Now for the app to access your bank account, it needs those sensitive credentials like username and password. And basically you are giving this sensitive information to the app. So what happens when the app um, after possessing those sensitive information of password and username, if it is hacked due to lack of some security breach. Now you have got to remember to change your bank credentials for each account. Now this is the fundamental problem that OAuth2 solves. So crux of OAuth, so OAuth is another way to authenticate to a service which is a security protocol that allows user to grant third party access to their web resources without sharing their passwords. And the, at the heart of the OAuth is an authorization token with limited rights, which the user can revoke at any time should they become suspicious or dissatisfied with the app they're using to access your business. Now let's see some of the important definitions of the term used. Now, what is this client? And this client can be an app running on a mobile device or a traditional web app and resource owner is the end user who can grant access to a protected resource. For example, the data that the app needs from your social media sites. Here you can grant access to the app. So you are the resource owner. All right. What is a resource server? A resource service server is service like the Facebook, Google and Twitter are even an HR service on your intranet in your organization, these are working as a resource server. So whenever OAuth token validation, whenever OAuth token validation is required to process API requests, APG is a, it acts as a resource server. Okay, APGX from Google Cloud. So, and what does the authorization server does? Do this authorization server is responsible for following that grant access to the app to users data on the resource server. And it does these things validating user authorization grants and issuing the access tokens. And authorization grants gives the app permission to access protected resources by retrieving an access token for the end user. And what is an access token? It's a long character string that serves as a credential used to access a protected resource. Basically, this is the uh, flow of, uh, this is the workflow. So client, it makes an authorization request to the resource owner, which is the end user who can grant access to the protected resource. And then it gets the authorization grant from the resource owner, owner of this resource, okay. And with this authorization grant, it goes to the authorization server, which is responsible for the uh, giving, granting the access 
by validating authorization grants and issuing access tokens. So it grants the access tokens. Now with this access token, then the client app goes to the resource server and gets the protected resource. So what is the resource server? It goes to it it goes to services like Facebook, Google, Twitter, or even an HR intranet um, service. So whenever the OAuth OAuth token validation is required to process API requests, APG is the resource server in this case. And finally, the protected resource. Protected resource is this. It is a data such as users' contact list, account information, or sensitive data. So finally, how does APG use OAuth 2? Any API proxied through APG X from Google Cloud can be protected through OAuth 2.0. It has an authorization server implementation and can generate and validate access tokens. Registering the apps with APGX by developers is the starting point. And registered apps can request access tokens through any of the four grant type interactions. And APGX provides a multifaceted OAuth2 policy that implements the details of each grant type. As an example, you can configure a policy that receives a request for an access token, evaluates all requested required credentials, and if the credentials are valid, returns an access token. And resource servers should be behind a firewall and be accessible only through API proxy.